All right, so I went back out this morning, ran some errands with the family and got the last few things that I needed. Um, I had forgotten to grab the actual drill bit for the three quarter inch dowel that we're gonna be using to secure the legs. Um, and I picked up the felt for the table. I decided to go with this sort of like golden mustard color as opposed to just like a red or green, which you see so often. Um, also didn't want to go with a black or a, a black or a white because the white would throw too much light off the table. It'd be hard to get good B-roll with how bright that would be. Um, it would kind of wash out. And then I felt like the black would be too dark and you'd lose a lot of components on it because a lot of components have like black borders, whether it be cards or cardboard tokens or things like that. So I went with that nice golden yellow mustard color and I feel like that's going to be pretty nice. Um, didn't add too much cost. I want to say more than enough felt to get the whole table done was about $14. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get back into cutting the two by fours that are gonna frame the top of the table, sort of the, uh, the armrests, bumper boards for the table. Um, then we're gonna be cutting the cup holders and token slots into those, and then affixing that to the top of the table, at which point we're sort of ready to move everything down to the basement and get started with tapping the larger holes for the dowels and getting the dowels into the legs. All right, so because the table isn't cut perfectly to 48 inches across, this eight foot board actually has about a half inch in the center of it uh, where the two pieces aren't gonna line up. So I'm actually just gonna cut that twice, basically cut it in half and then take a little bit off one board. Um, and that'll be my two end pieces. Then we'll shorten the two side pieces and we'll have our three tops. And after that, we'll start cutting out some holes with the uh, hole drill bits, the hole saws. All right, so these line up good. I'm gonna go ahead and take the two remaining two by fours and lay them across the top of this, and mark them off so that they are cut to fit between them. So they're gonna be, in theory, eight feet under six inches. Um, or sorry, I said that backwards. Eight inches under six feet um, to fit between the two two by fours on either side. All right, so bumper bars are sort of laid out in place. Everything lines up nice and neat. This little gap here is just because I didn't spend the extra two seconds to line it up. Um, you know, but just now, obviously I could adjust them. <clears throat> They'd all line up nice. So now I need to decide where I'm gonna cut out holes. So it's a four by six table. In theory, you'd have up to six people playing at it at a time, probably one on each short end and then two side by side on each long end. And so what that means is, I think we're gonna do two cup holders on the long ends, probably one on the left, on the far left, one on the far right, and then right in the middle, three circular cutouts for tokens. And I'll do the same thing on that side, cup holder on the far right, cup holder on the far left, three cutouts in the middle for tokens. And then on the ends, I think what we'll do is we'll do cutout for a cup on the right, two spots for tokens on the left. And same over here reversed. So it'd be two spots for tokens here, cup holder over there. I think that's what we're gonna go with. And left-handed people be damned because I can't do anything about that. Unless I just do one equally sized hole on either side and let the person choose. Well, no, because uh, that would be more symmetrical. That would bother me less. Okay, yeah, we're just gonna do one hole on either side, nothing in the middle. Yeah. So that's what we're gonna do now, start punching out some holes. All right, so cup holders, uh, which we are going to be making with, let me put my uh, little examples down here. Um, we're going to be making them with these uh, hole saws. Uh, these basically go onto your power drill. 
um, they attach using this nifty little sort of universal connector here. And then you can get them at all different diameters, right? So this is a three inch, this is a three and a quarter inch, I have a six inch inside, I have a half inch, all different things. And they're great for just punching out holes through wood. I actually just cut a six inch circular hole through one of our basement doors because we wanted to make that sort of the basement for the cats and we wanted them to be able to get in and out of the basement without us having to open the door so that our two year old son doesn't fall down the stairs. And so I just drilled a six inch hole through the bottom of the door and they can pop right in and out of that. It works out great. So um, I went with three and a quarter inch because I figured that was gonna be best for most drinks that you would see around a gaming table. So like here's an oversized Red Bull can, obviously fits perfectly into that. Um, here's like a, a large Burger King cup, the base of it fits perfectly into that. Uh, you know, water bottles, no problem. If I went with the three inch, which I unfortunately already owned, but decided not to use, and I spent the extra money on the, the three and a quarter, you can see just a touch snug. Um, and I, you know, that may work itself out as far as like how much wood it takes off the edge while it's cutting. Um, obviously it fits some, but not others. Um, so I decided to go with the three and a quarter just to play it safe. I also measured the bottom of my favorite glasses that we have in the house, which are my double rocks glasses. Um, like, you know, scotch on the rocks, but it's called a double rocks glass because it's slightly larger. Um, I like to drink out of those. So do my friends when we're playing. Those have roughly a three and one eighth inch base. So I think three and a quarter should suit those pretty well. Um, and then I have other stuff. I have like highball glasses and uh, the base of our wine glasses is three inches, the little, you know, the bottom of the stem of the wine glass. So that would fit inside there perfectly. So we're gonna go ahead and try to punch these out. I'm gonna measure in from the sides and then in from those cuts. I think what I might actually do to differentiate is I might do the actual um, drink holders, three and a quarter, and the token spots, three, just so there's some difference between the two to sort of make it a little more obvious that one is meant for one thing and the other is meant for a different thing. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna mark these off. I'm gonna grab the, uh, the drill, get these guys hooked up and start punching out some holes. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is sort of beyond what I would normally do. I'm trying to go fancy here. I'm testing myself like with the dowels and the legs. Um, I'm, I'm trying to push my, my skills a little bit into something I've never done before, but in my head, this makes sense and it should work. So we're gonna try it and see what happens. Um, but I will say that if you wanted to go this route, it's more tools that you need to buy. It's gonna be a little bit more money. So if you were just going with the table, sort of as we have it built right now, the four x four frame on the bottom, the chipboard for the tabletop, the actual two x four frame for the bumper boards, the armrests around the outside. And then if you went with four x four legs instead of the, the fancier kitchen legs that I have and just a nice felt top, you would be at right around $100 with the screws that you would need to get this done. So again, 100 bucks, assuming you have a power drill and a saw that you can work with this stuff. Um, you know, obviously, if you don't have those tools, this isn't the kind of project for you. You gotta pick those things up to be able to do stuff like this. Um, but yeah, you'd be right around 100 bucks and you'd be done right now. You'd slap the legs on, you'd probably screw those into place with some oversized decking screws, go right through the outside 4x4s onto the inside 4x4 legs, grab those. You'd felt the tabletop by basically laying the felt over the top, gluing it down in sort of various locations or using double-sided carpet tape. That's actually very useful. I have some inside that I'm gonna be using for mine. Um, or if you wanna go really simple, you could stretch the felt over the top, lay your two by four bumper rails over the top, and then as you nail through your two by four bumper boards into the tabletop to secure those in place, it's gonna pierce through the felt and tack the felt into place around the outer edge. So you might have a little bit of, um, a little bit of slack in the middle of the felt. It's not gonna be perfectly taut like a pool tabletop, uh, but that's not really what you're looking for. You're just looking for something that lays nice and clean and that you don't have any wrinkles in. And as long as you pull it tight before you start nailing two by fours down and sort of retighten it every time you're about to start a new two by four, you'd end up with a nice felt tabletop that looks pretty damn smooth. That's what I did on my table upstairs and I was surprised how well it worked. So that's the easiest route. You could do something like wood glue or fabric glue for sort of a second easiest. And then for the, I guess, most complex, slightly more expensive, you could buy a $10 roll of double-sided carpet tape lay that out in strips going across the whole thing and press your felt down across that and that's gonna hold it on real tight. Um, but yeah, so I wanna try cup holders, I wanna try token slots, we're gonna give this a shot. So like I said, on the sideboards, we're gonna be doing a cup holder on either side with three token slots in the middle. Um, I'm not gonna adjoin the three token slots, I'm not gonna cause the circles to like overlap so that it creates one sort of lumpy token tray. I want three separate token cups. Uh, those are probably gonna be like, I mean, you have to measure, you have to keep in mind that the cut is uh, three in, or, or 1.5 and 1.8, I can't do the math in my head, but 
half of three, uh, three and a quarter inches uh, across from the center of the cut. So then you probably wanna have a whole nother three inches maybe between each one before you get to the center of the, or before you get to the edge of the next cut. Um, so I'll probably be using the actual hole saw itself to measure out gaps between them to make sure that they aren't too close and make sure that they're evenly spread. Starting with the cup holder though, I think we wanna go, let's see here. I think eight inches. Yeah, I think eight inches on center in from the edge is good. So we'll do that. And then for our first center token holder, um, I'm going to lay this guy right out on what would be the center of our first cup holder. Um, and I'm gonna measure out 24, just to get an idea of where two feet off of that is. Then I'm gonna do the same from the other side. Those holes land almost on top of each other. They're actually about an inch apart right there. Um, and so I think right between them is going to be our center token slot. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that. And then like I said, I'm actually gonna take our three inch uh, hole saw, which we're gonna use for our tokens. And I'm gonna look through where the actual bit would go on that guy. Um, and I'm gonna look straight down and make sure that I'm centered over that hole, which I am. Do you wanna come say hi to the camera? Yeah, come say hi. Hi. All right, so um, it's a little bit into the afternoon now. I had to take a break and go help my neighbor move some uh, some metal because he is a blacksmith and he got a shipment in that he needed help shifting around inside of his workshop. So I took about a two hour break and helped him with that and played with my son for a bit and got back to drilling the holes out. So as you can see, can you show, the, can you show that to the camera? Show it, see? So we, uh, we did a quick test cut and you can see it came out nice and clean. And this is actually the three inch cut. It's not the three and a quarter because it turns out that three and a quarter is too close to the edges of the two by four that basically it's gonna end up splitting through the two by four. And the additional wood that's cut out by the actual um, wall of the saw bit uh, opened the hole up enough that it's perfect for all of the different size things that I wanted in there, even like the largest, which was the water bottle. So I'm gonna go with the three inch and that's gonna work perfectly for what I need. But you can see, it's a nice solid cup holder there. And then when you put that over, um, well, what will be the top of the table, but you get a nice two inch deep little cup holder there, which is kind of perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest of those out. So this is my wife and son. She's doing a spectacular job of entertaining him and distracting him with food so that I can continue to get these holes cut out. And if we look over here, actually you can see on this board there, they actually came out really nice. Really kind of impressed with how high the how high quality the cut is. Um, I think it's because I went with a, a nicer wood, basically. And so it's, it's not cracking, it's not giving away, it's not shredding on the edges. It looks really smooth and neat. Okay, so um, I've got this side done, cup holder on either end and the three token holders in the center, as well as that side, cup holder on either end, three token holders in the center. They all came out really well, um, and I'm going to be starting uh, the cuts on the end pieces. I'm only going to be doing um, one cut on either side. I'm not gonna do any in the middle, uh, because you're only gonna have one player on the ends of the table, and I feel like them having a cup holder and their own token holder is probably more than you would need in most cases. Usually, in most games, you have common tokens on the board. Occasionally, if the game is so big that you need to split things up, you'll do two different sort of piles, and that's why I like the either side pieces, but in a six player game, you're either gonna have everything spread across the board evenly or having your own one little cup for things like coins uh, will be fine. Okay, so I really couldn't be happier with how this came out. Um, really love the, the positions I chose. 
I feel like they're gonna work really well. So like I said, I've got the ends done now. You've got a cup holder one foot in from the left, one foot in from the right. Same on both ends. And again, we've got one in eight inches from the end of this board, so that's technically 12 inches from the edge of the table. So equidistant there on those. Uh, then you've got these three centered on either side. And then same thing on that end. So really happy with that. Next step is gonna to be to bring this inside, get it down to the basement, um, get the felt onto the top of it, uh, which I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna use double-sided carpet tape and then uh, determine how I'm gonna be attaching these rail boards. I may actually use screws, but I may do it in a very simplistic way. I might just put a screw, something like here on the end, here on the end, and then centered on these middle ones. And again, on the end, on the end. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna try to do finishing nails because I have two inch finishing nails. Those aren't going to bite enough. Those are gonna bite about an eighth of an inch, which isn't enough. And uh, I just, I want something that's really gonna hold these on with minimal hardware. And I feel like rather than putting, you know, 10 or 12 finishing screws into every single side of this table, uh, I'd rather do one or, or, or two or three screws, you know? Um, so we'll see. But now I gotta get this thing inside and it weighs a ton, so. So we are in the basement now. I've moved the table down here. Right, let me adjust the camera so you can see. So we've got that. I've got my um, my top rails that are going on, my bumper boards, my two ends, my two sides. I've grabbed the legs that I'm gonna be using. I need to extract the old busted screws out of those because I literally ripped those off of a dining room table or a, a small kitchenette table, actually. Um, so I need to get those busted screws out of there. They're a combination of stripped and flat out broken. Um, and then I brought down the wooden dowel that I'm gonna be using to actually set the legs into the table. So what I'm gonna be doing probably for the rest of the night is sanding all of this um, because I'm gonna be staining everything with a sort of red mahogany stain. Hopefully that'll take okay on the legs because those were actually, um, those actually had sea, uh, lin linseed oil applied to them, um, which is a, a wood finishing oil that soaks in and sort of gives them a nice sort of honey glow. Um, hopefully that hasn't filled the wood too much and it'll still take the stain, but the rest of the table definitely will because it hasn't been uh, you know treated with anything. So I'm um, gonna be sanding everything perfectly smooth because you always sand before you stain. If I get to the point where I've got the sanding completed, I will attempt to get everything stained tonight. The stain will set in overnight and will be dry, uh, you know, first thing, not first thing in the morning, but around noon tomorrow, um, at which point I can actually try to tap out the dowel holes through the frame and the legs and maybe get the dowels set in. Uh, those would be glued in place, which means this entire thing might be done Monday evening basically ready to use um, but yeah so I'm gonna start with the sanding all right so I've got the um, the four boards that are going to make up the bumper boards around the side I have those sanded I've sanded down on the long pieces uh, all four sides I didn't worry about the ends because those are gonna be butted up against the actual end pieces. The end pieces, I did all four sides and the ends of them because those will be exposed on the outside of the table. Now, once I get this whole thing put together, I would normally go around and do a final sanding, but because I want to stain it, I'm actually going to stain it before I finish the final assembly. So there is no sort of final step to sand it down. So I want to get everything nice and smooth right now. So these pieces are done. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sort of stand the table up and work on smoothing out the outside edge of the frame and the underside of the frame. Obviously, I'm not gonna worry about the inside of the frame because nobody's going to be interacting with that. All right, guys, so after going through and sanding everything down, cleaning and everything up, I actually kind of really like the look of the natural wood. I might end up finishing it with an oil, but I don't think I'm gonna go ahead with the stain. Um, also, I don't think I have enough stain to take care of this entire thing, even if I only focused on the pieces that were going to be visible. And I'm really beginning to doubt that the stain will take properly on those legs since they've been oiled. Um, from what I can see online, that's basically gonna be a no-go, and then I'll end up with a two-tone table where the legs don't match the rest of it. Um, so I'd rather just leave everything the way it is and keep it looking kind of uh, you know, in line with itself. 
Um, so I'm going to go ahead and try to tap out these leg holes and see how that goes. Never tried anything like this before. Uh, hopefully it works. That is one honking drill bit. All right guys, so we may have a bit of a problem here and it's pretty frustrating, but I'm not exactly sure what to do about it. I have doweled this leg into place from both uh, this side and this side as best I can. I have the dowels driven into the center of the leg post. So basically uh, they're, they're meeting together inside the center of the leg post and they're driven all the way through. And I have uh, Gorilla Wood glue on them all the way through and into the post itself. So when they dry, it should be super sturdy, but it's not sitting as even as I would have hoped, and it doesn't right now feel as sturdy as I thought it would. I don't think the leg is going anywhere. I don't think it physically can because it's, it's literally got wood driven through it, so it's pinned in place, but it's pinned in a bit of a wobbly way. I'm thinking once the glue dries and sort of sets all of that wood together, and once the weight of the table is on it, uh, once it's flipped over, um, I think it's gonna be super sturdy. So, um, not loving it right now, but I sort of have faith that this is gonna work out the way I expect it to, and I'm gonna get, gonna get started on the other legs. All right, update. Um, first leg, not sure what I did wrong. Think maybe I drilled the dowel hole slightly off angle. Second leg, I only have the first dowel in, and that thing is sturdy as hell. No wiggle at all. It's like it's one piece of wood. Um, so I'm, I'm actually debating even putting the second dowel in, but I mean, in my head, that's just, that, that needs to be there. Um, I'm worried I'm gonna make it worse than it is because it's already so close to perfect. Um, but I guess I have to try, so we'll see. All right, just a quick update on this one. I'm not even gonna hop in front of the camera. Um, third leg is in. I decided to stick with the single dowel on the second leg and a single dowel on the third leg worked perfectly as well. I think I might've just goofed something on the first leg, which is unfortunate, but at least it has two dowels in it now. So once that dries, um, and I'm also pumping wood glue into all of the, any open seam, anywhere where wood doesn't meet wood perfectly with these table legs, I'm just pumping Gorilla Wood Glue in there to make sure that it bonds as securely as possible. So first leg, little wonky, probably my bad. Uh, second and third leg, tight as hell. Uh, even driving it in felt better. Every hit felt like a solid crack. I could feel the uh, I could feel the the actual dowel driving through the wood a little bit every hit. With that first one, I was banging away at it and I wasn't getting much progress for you know nine out of ten swings, and then it would move a little bit. So second and third legs were definitely done correctly. First leg might be a little bit wrong, but that's entirely on me. I've got another half inch on this last leg and I have the dowel lined up so tight. I'm using all my strength with this mallet and I still can't close the gap. So I figured I'd let you guys watch me pound away at it for the last minute or so. And then we're done with legs and I'm gonna go to bed and probably ice my shoulder because this has been a hell of a workout getting these in. good hits and it's going to be abutted right against the other piece of wood. Alright. So, um, kneel down to catch my breath. So, these three table legs, solid as hell. They actually got more solid as I went because I got better at tapping the holes and working the dowel in. So, 
we went from I don't love this leg at all to wow that's impressive to oh my god <coughs> these are basically the same piece of wood to I have played god and recrafted separate pieces of lumber into one piece. <coughs> Man, that's a workout. Okay, so I'm gonna pump a little extra wood glue into the seams over here, not that there is much of a seam at all because that is a perfectly snug fit. And I'm going to let these dry overnight. Um, like I said, I'm gonna go get some much needed rest. Tomorrow, we will felt the top of this table. We will attach the bumper bars. We'll do some final sanding to make sure everything lines up nice and neat without any uh, areas that could splinter or rub anybody the wrong way. Um, and then we'll have ourselves a completed gaming table. Whew. Yeah. Okay, so as you can see, the table is now right side up. Uh, it is now Sunday evening, so call it day three. Um, at about 8.30 at night. I unfortunately didn't get anything done today because my sister and her fiance came over and we had a nice day of grilling and spending time outside and just kind of relaxing. Um, but you can see the table is right side up. All four legs have been uh, sort of firmly attached in place. They're nice and sturdy. I can tell you that from having picked it up. Still have to cut off the excess dowel that's sticking off uh, on the side of each of the legs here. Um, these boards are not attached yet. These are just laying here. I was showing, uh, again, my sister's fiance the table. Um, I have here my felt. This is the lovely sort of um, golden, I guess you could call that like a golden mustard color that I'm going to be going with. I thought that would be something nice, a little different than uh, green or red. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to be using this double-sided adhesive tape. Very cheap to pick up. Felt was also pretty cheap to pick up. This is a uh, nine by six foot piece. So obviously big enough for the table to have plenty of extra slack to work with. And that cost me, I wanna say 13 or $14. The tape was about five or $6. So that's gonna get the tabletop taken care of as far as the felt goes. And then we'll go ahead and uh, get these boards drilled down into place and do some final sanding as well as removing these uh, excess dowel pieces here. And the table will be done and ready to go with. On top of that, um, I also picked up this um, Berber 9 by 12 foot carpet, which covers a good amount of the space in this room. Uh, basically goes a couple inches from the wall there and about a foot from the wall on this side. Might shift that so it's a little more centered, um, but that's real nice. Also goes pretty close to this wall over here. Still haven't yet decided how I'm gonna have this room laid out, but it's coming together very quickly and very nicely. We've got the table, we've got the carpet. I have that electric fireplace, which I picked up for $80, even though it originally was marked for 300, simply because it was an open box with a very minor um, cosmetic ding right there. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna use that to put this uh, spare television that I have into play. That's just a spare 32 inch screen that I had lying around. Nothing fancy, nothing super high quality, but good enough for a Chromecast. Um, yeah, and then I need to figure out where I'm gonna be putting my gaming shelf, how I'm gonna be sort of recording videos so that I can make sure I have a decent background. I like to have my gaming shelf behind me. I wanna have room to move around lighting. Obviously, I'm gonna be moving my computer desk down here, though that doesn't need to be uh, in a place that's you know, filmable because now that I have this nice table, I'll be filming at the table. So my computer can kind of just be off to the side somewhere. I also have all of my uh, my musical equipment down here, my uh, bass amp, all of my amplifiers, my guitars, my bass guitars, some spare cases, some electronic components. I need to find somewhere to put that. I would like to have it on display because I love those things. Um, but uh, right now they're just taking up a lot of space, so I'll have to figure that out. But let's go ahead and jump back into getting this table finished up with felting it. All right, so first thing I want to do is make sure there isn't any debris on the table. Just because it was upside down on the carpet, there are some bits of carpet here uh, that I'm going to be cleaning off. All right, so the first thing that I'll be doing is taking the felt and sort of just laying it over the table, no tape, just to see how it fits. Uh, make sure I have a general idea of how I want it to fit onto the table. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and remove the felt, lay the tape out. I'm going to go around the entire border and then I'm going to do strips going down across the table. Um, and that'll be plenty to catch the actual felt and hold it into place. This stuff is very strong, very durable. I actually use this to hold down uh, carpets in the house as well as carpet pads onto our staircase steps um, and nothing moves. Uh, very, very durable stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay the felt over here and see what it looks like.
right, so as I'm laying this out, it looks nice. I'm not gonna worry too much about this sort of crease down the middle. That's just from the felt being folded. Uh, you can either steam that out with, a, uh, with an iron or you can just let it rest on the table and after some time, that's naturally just gonna work itself out. There are, are however, as I sort of run my hands over this, two rough spots here and here, uh, most likely from where I've inserted screws. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and take a sander and quickly hit those just so that they're not noticeable once the table is on. Making sure I don't see any others that are bothering me. All right, so now I'm gonna start with the taping. All right, so tape is down. Now the tricky part is to lay it out as perfectly as I can on the first try so that I don't have to reset it after it's already stuck to the tape. All right, so as you guys can see, I've got the felt onto the table. It stuck down real nice. I didn't really have any issues with creasing or anything like that. The nice thing about this double-sided tape is it's a little gummy. You can kind of work it. So if you do have a spot where you get your felt down and then you notice there's a little bit of a wrinkle, a little bit of a crease, you can kind of use your thumb and your palm and work the felt around onto that uh, that tape, which is pretty malleable. It's almost like a it's almost like a gel. Um, and you can get that wrinkle worked out and the tape will kind of just adjust underneath to make it work for you. Uh, I went around the outside and just trimmed off the excess felt loosely. Once I get these boards uh, screwed down and I am gonna be screwing them down, um, I will go around and cut off the excess felt like sort of finely. I'm gonna use a fabric cutter that my wife has, kind of looks like a pizza cutter, um, except it's much sharper and it's designed for cutting fabric in nice, clean, straight lines. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that once we're done. But first I'm gonna go ahead and attach these. I've already taken a quick look at these to make sure that if there are any sides that have blemishes that I don't feel like trying to touch up like large um, grooves in the wood or anything like that, those are facing down at the table with the cleanest side facing up. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get these screwed into place and then we should be able to work on final sanding. So really quickly, I am going to be using this countersink bit. Um, this is going to ensure that me drilling the screws through these lovely cutout two by fours doesn't split the wood. And it also makes sure that I can have my screw head flush to the wood without having a bunch of additional wood sort of uh, jammed up other than needs to be sanded down. It's a much cleaner process. Um, if you didn't have one of these, you could just drill in very carefully, but I'm going to use one of these, or I should say screw in very carefully, but I'm going to use one of these just to be safe. I'm going to be doing, it looks like four screws on the long sides and three screws on the shorter sides. Okay guys, so I gotta make this quick because I'm running out of space on this memory card. But uh, you can see I've got these all screwed in now. The screws are nice and recessed and they didn't cause any additional damage to the boards. Like I said, I've got three on the short sides and four on the long sides. Getting a look now with the boards attached, you can see the cup holders have the felt inside of them just as planned. You've got these three token holder spots here in the middle and then a cup holder on either side for the long side, as well as two slots on the shorter sides uh, to be used as either cup holders or token trays, and then a mirror on the other side over there. One cup holder, three token trays, another cup holder. Overall, really happy with how this looks and how it came out. Okay guys, so I'm probably gonna wrap things up here as far as the tutorial goes. Um, like I mentioned from the beginning of this video, this was meant to be a quick, uh, quick-ish, do-it-yourself, cheap-ish 
gaming table, at least compared to what you would pay for a gaming table, similar to this from a large production company that makes these things like Wormwood. Um, you're probably going to pay about $5,000 from them around that area, granted much higher quality, nicer wood, stained, beautifully crafted, everything's going to be perfect. Um, with this, I'd say you're getting about 90% of that without all of the polish. Uh, it's going to be just as functional, and this honestly costs around $100. So um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you want to see more stuff like this, let me know. Uh, if you have any questions about how I put this together, I'm going to include a pricing list and instructions, or not instructions, but uh, components down below as to what I use, cuts of wood, things like that. Um, but if you have any more specifics, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, like or dislike as you feel necessary. And uh, hopefully if you guys like this, you'll consider subscribing, possibly setting a notification bell to all. Other than that, I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good night.